All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rakakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and Shalom to your brethren that are laboring and pushing this word out in truth, in sincerity, and in charity. I'm the brother Abraham from the camp here in GMS Chicago. Coming to do another quick lesson through the Holy Spirit, Lord willing to be edifying. And uh, this video is going to be titled, You're Your Worst Enemy. Okay, You're Your Worst Enemy. Alright, and the reason for that is, is because uh, we're in the flesh. Okay, we are in the flesh. So, we, we're not going to walk this walk of faith of truth perfectly like Yahweh I did okay he was the only one to be able to come in the flesh and walk in the flesh perfectly okay he did not commit any sin all right while he was in the flesh all right he was unspotted all right but we, on the other hand, as the scriptures say, uh, our, fil our righteousness is as filthy rags. Okay, and uh, Lord willing, I'm going to get that scripture as well in this lesson. Okay, and you're your worst enemy because you're a, a spirit that's dwelling in chains of darkness. Alright, chains of darkness which is this flesh all right this body of death that we're subject unto so uh it's impossible for us to live this thing perfectly but that doesn't mean um that gives you no excuse to willingly do something wrong or commit sin okay we fall and we're gonna fall and we're gonna continue to fall but we do the best that we can, all right? We do the best that we can. And we do the best that we can by constantly staying in the spirit, okay? And as it says in the book of Sirach, I'm not sure uh, where is it exactly, but it says, a wise man knoweth when he slippeth, all right? So you know when you're off balance, Okay, when uh, the spirit is out of balance and the flesh is out of balance. All right, and the scriptures talk about in Proverbs, right? Proverbs 11, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. All right, the scriptures say, um, be not over-righteous. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? All right, be not over much wicked. Why shouldest thou die before thy time, man? So it's all about balance, all right? And a balance does not mean that it's 50-50, 50% in the spirit and then 50% in the flesh, no, all right? The spirit has, the spiritual scale has to outweigh the flesh scale, okay? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the book of Matthew 26 and verse 41. It says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Right? So, in these times that we're in currently, all right, we're in the last days according to prophecy. Right? Everything that these prophecies say are happening as I speak, as we uh, live. All right, unto this day, you know, based off the signs, we measure the times, and the times is that we are in the last days. So watch and pray, right, that we enter not into temptation. All right, the spirit is indeed willing, but our flesh, our flesh is the weak part. Okay, let's see what that word Willing is right. 
they were willing it says it's ready it's willing or it's always ready to do the right thing to do what was right right forward in spirit ready willing all right doesn't give you too much but Get it weak. Get that Greek word uh weak weak and firm feeble. Alright, this flesh is not firm, it's feeble, it's weak. And uh, without strength, more feeble and potent. Sick. Alright. We're sick. We're weak. We're feeble, we're impotent, we're not firm, or this flesh for the most part, okay? But our spirit, our spirit, we have the Holy Spirit, okay? So in us is a constant battle between um, good and evil, all right? That's why um, we are going to make mistakes and we are going to fall and we are going to sin. Right, but scripture say, let not your sins weigh you down. Be be confident in this second chance that the most high gave you. Alright, neglect not the gift that it is in you. Book of Ephesians 2 and 8 says that uh, faith is a gift from the Heavenly Father. Alright, so we've been given this gift of faith. We have a worship from the Holy One. Alright, now uh, it is up to you to repent. And do what's required of you as a light man. And the most important thing you can do right now is uh, teach this word. If you love me, feed my sheep. Right? Go on the highways and byways and compel them to the marriage. Alright? Cry aloud, spare not, and show my people their transgressions. So this is like the main job of ours right now is to teach this word. Right, but it's more than just going out into the highways and byways. What are you doing when you're not teaching? Right, when you're when you're not um you know what are you doing when you're not making lessons? Right, what are you doing when you're not with your brothers? Right, what are you doing when you're um not in the presence of the Aki. Right, when you're not out there in the hours of life, what are you doing when you're on your own? That's when you're the most vulnerable. By Satan, right, by your flesh, right? Are you still, you know, being in the spirit the best that you can? Are you still fighting to be in the spirit the best you can? Or do you just fall into uh, your, your flesh? all the time all right and that's something that uh you know yourself and when you're out of balance and when you're falling okay like i said we're not gonna do it perfectly all right but we do the best that we can okay this is uh first corinthians 10 and 13 it says there has no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So the Most High knows us more than we even know ourselves. He made us. Okay? And we, He knows we're in the flesh. He knows this. Uh, this is the reason he has compassion and mercy upon us. Alright, uh, because we know he knows that we are but flesh. But at the same time, um he's still gonna test you, still gonna try you. Alright. But he will never be be uh he will never put anything on you more than you can handle. Okay? 
he'll never put you in a situation that you can't get out of okay this is uh the book of first peter chapter one and verse six it says wherein ye greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations right so yeah we're in heaviness all right we're being afflicted all right we're being tried in the furnace of adversity furnace of affliction through manifold temptations manifold uh, trials all right this is verse 7 that the trial of your faith being more precious than that than of gold that perishes Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Alright, so this is the point of all this. This is the point of what we're going what we're going through. So that um at the end of this, alright, you're gonna be more precious than than gold, than the golden wedge of old fur. Alright, that vessel of honor. Right, it's gonna it's gonna be accomplished at the appearing of Yahushua Mashiach, and then we shall all be changed. All right, then we're gonna be perfect at that time. All right, when the law, statutes, and commandments are gonna be dwelling in our inward parts, then we'll be perfect. Okay, right now it's impossible to do this thing perfectly, and it's okay. All right, but we do the best that we can. We, we uh, follow the Spirit. Okay. This is uh Second Peter two and nine. It says the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Right, like I just read. Okay, um, the Most High will not tempt you above that which you are able, but always make a way for you to escape, and to reserve the unjust unto the day. Of judgment to be punished okay but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness despise government presumptuous are they self-willed they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities all right so this is a uh, characteristics traits of those that walk in the flesh that walk their flesh all right that uh, serve and are a slave to the lust of their flesh. Okay. Um, they're unruly, self willed, proud, out of order. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, read the book of Romans 7. I'm going to start at verse 13. This is For we know that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal, sold under sin. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with the law. The law is spiritual. Alright, so the New Living Translation says, So the trouble is not with the law, but for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. And that's exactly how it is, man. We're a slave to sin because we're dwelling in these chains of darkness all right we're serving this as a punishment for the sins that we've done it says for that which i do i allow not for what i would that do i not but what i hate that i do so we know what is good we know what is the right thing to do always yet we never do it well i wouldn't say never but we fail at doing it okay new living translation it says i don't really understand myself for i want to do what is right but i don't do it instead i do what i hate right and it's the flesh versus the spirit inside you at all times uh every second of the day all right every second of the day it's always a battle Right. It says uh 
Verse 16, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Right? Because uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Alright? That, that's why the sin dwells in us. Okay? For, for I know that in me that is in my flesh, right? Not your spirit, right? Your flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Okay, so the flesh is what uh, is no good thing. It says, um, the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. Who can know it? Why your flesh is completely wicked and contrary to the spirit. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Right, so like I said uh, in verse 15. Right, we don't do the things we, we would do. The things that we wouldn't do, we're doing it. So it says, uh, I'm gonna jump down to verse 22 or 21. It says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present in it. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Okay, so the inward man, that's uh, when we came to the knowledge and truth of an, an understanding of who we are as a people okay and more most importantly our pact with the heavenly father all right these statutes laws and commandments all right we we do that which is what we're supposed to do fear the most high and keep his commandments for his old duty of man all right but <laughs> sounds simple but it's not it's not easy Okay. This is verse 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. So in our body, right? Our flesh, warring against the law of our minds. And we're in captivity, we're slaves. To, to the sin, to the flesh. It says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And that's Yahweh Shai. Okay, it says, Ye are bought with a price, with the precious blood of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Okay, he uh, was that mediator for us as a people to the Heavenly Father. Okay. Now we have a shot of salvation. This is Isaiah 64 and verse 6. It says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we and we all do fade as a leaf and our and our iniquities. Like the wind have taken us away. And uh, this just reminded me of this psalm in the Psalms of David. It says, uh my sins are more than I could bear. There are more than the hairs of my head. Right? But as it says in the book of Isaiah, the first chapter, though your sins be as scarlet, but yet shall they be made white. Okay, all this, all our sins are going to be wiped away, washed away. Alright? Once we defeat death, right? When Yahweh Shai comes back, right, we're going to be transformed in the twinkling of an eye. Okay, it says in the book of Corinthians. Alright, so this is uh, Jeremiah 31 and 31. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Alright, so the pact is the same as the first with the same people. Alright, southern kingdom, northern kingdom. The house of Israel, the house of Judah, with the Heavenly Father, no other nation. 
Okay, now according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was in husband unto them, saith the Lord. Alright, um... Actually, let me, uh... Get the other version that says something that I want to, uh... A point that I want to bring out. Right here. In Hebrews 8 and 7, it says, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Alright, so what was wrong with the first covenant? Alright, what was wrong with it? Alright, everything was right except for what? Verse 8, for finding fault with them, he saith, so the fault was with us. Alright, the fault was with this flesh. Because like it says in the book of Romans, this law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Alright, so the fault was us, this flesh. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Just as it says in Jeremiah 31, alright, the Old Testament and New Testament, the covenant is the same. Now according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So the only thing that's going to change and be different in the second covenant, this new covenant, it's only the law, statutes, and commandments are going to be dwelling inside us. They're going to be in our laws. I mean, they're going to be in our minds. Okay? They're going to be written in our hearts. Okay? And now we're not going to need to go out to the highways and byways and teach our people. Because everybody's going to know the law, statutes, and commandments. And who, who the Heavenly Father is. Alright? There's going to be no need for us to do these lessons every day. Uh, all the time all right because now everybody's gonna know it's gonna be something natural just in us okay and then that's when we will be perfect that is when we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye all right we don't know what we shall be or what we shall be but we know when we are period we shall be like him all right and the most important thing is that we get delivered out of these um, bodies of death alright cause not only do we need to be delivered out of the nuclear destruction that's coming to America but we also need to be delivered out of these bodies of death okay because <laughs> you know all the time wicked thoughts all the time Satan trying to attack you all the time Temptation everywhere, our right, wickedness everywhere, all right, and we constantly fall, and we constantly um, you know it doesn't feel good to fall, but you know, the important thing is that you get up, all right, we could uh, finish off on that one. In the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 24 and 16 For a just man falleth seven times And rises up again But the wicked shall fall into mischief Now this doesn't Literally mean Alright Seven times Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No the number Seven represents completion Alright completion So we're gonna constantly fall Constantly Alright, but the important thing is that you get up. Always get up. Alright, the wicked are the ones that are trying to fall into mischief. Alright, we got our hope in Yahweh Bashimi Al Shah and His mercy. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it off there.
Lord willing, it was an edifying lesson, and as always, our honor, glory, and praises goes to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of the Great Millstone. Until the next time, Shalom.